Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I am Chelsea, you know that, I know that. I am just a lady with a bulldog and a camera. Oh my God, he is so precious over there. You can't see him. I know you wish you could, but you can't. If you can hear him, I'm very sorry. My office might be a little bit more echoey right now because we have taken everything off the walls, packed everything up basically and put it in storage. All I have in here right now is my desk and like one other thing. So bare bones, baby. Let's go. I have to move out of this house in less than 10 days and I don't know where I'm moving. Yay, home buying. While 27 weeks pregnant. Cool. Okay, so today we have an Octavia Zoom call to go over. Title of it says that it's only for the top ranking reps. Today is us. Congratulations. It's you and I and whoever else is watching this video. So let's go ahead and watch that. Subscribe, like, and comment. We do have new merch. If you would like to support the channel, it's a great way to support my channel. T-shirts, hoodies, stickers, all those things, real cute shirts, Wiggum's Couch Club merch that says certified couch person right here. I'll have Ethan put up some pictures of the new merch. And then also we have the Stay Spicy Mushroom shirts, which I am very proud of. I love them. I would be wearing it right now, but it's in the dryer. Oh my God, I dried it. I shouldn't have dried it. Hopefully I didn't. With cotton shirts, don't dry them, air dry them. Don't be dumb like I am. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, welcome to Real Talk, everybody. My name is Doug Wood. I'll be your host today. If this is your first time logging into Real Talk. <laughs> Doug Wood, take me to dinner first, Doug. Me with open arms. I'm going to talk actually a little bit later about my journey, but I've been an Optavia coach, a proud Optavia coach for 14 years now. And today is going to be extreme real talk. So if you're new to this call, this is my opportunity to um, get real. This is like back on MTV, you know, years ago, did you guys watch MTV, not Cribs, but uh, what was it? The real world. This is where we stop being polite and we start getting real. Uh, this is going to be, this is going to be real talk today, but I, I named it today. I'm serving up a truth salad. I'll get into that in a minute, but serving up a February. So this man has been in Octavia for literally years and years. And when he said 14 years, I was like, baby, that I don't think it's been around that long. It has. Apparently it was founded in 2002. I didn't know that, which is not good because I've done a, <laughs> a deep dive on this company. I did know that, but I guess I just forgot because I feel like we, we haven't seen much of Octavia, but it's been pushed more and more recently. That's wild. Also, the whole real talk type of stuff, the whole, I'm going to give you some tough love. I'm going to give you some real talk over. You just can't handle it because I'm real. Hate it. I hate it so much. It's not only, not only is it cringe, Duh. But it's also, it's just a way for them to present what they're saying, which is typically, as we know, nonsensical, like vague, just the most obvious things, Pinterest board personified type of stuff, the most obvious things. But if I'm saying it loud and if I'm saying it kind of rude, then it's going to snap you out of whatever you're doing and you need the tough love and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, people, not everyone needs that. I mean, yeah, of course, people sometimes receive information a little bit better if it's cut and dry and not sugarcoated. But I personally don't believe that that's what this is because when it's cut and dry, black and white, not sugarcoated, not passive aggressive, not even passive, just very assertive communication, very logical. There's no fluff. It's not manipulation, but this is. So we're going to break that down. Truth salad. Stay on if you want some truth. If you're easily offended um, or very, 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 very wounded or vulnerable, um, I don't know if this is the call for you, honestly. Um, but I know there's a lot of you on the line that uh, need have some big goals and some need some miracles in your life and your finances and in your business um, that you're really praying into some big things in this next season. And I want to give you an opportunity to take your own temperature and measure if 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 we're doing the right things that will support those goals. I'll get into that here in a minute. But before I do, I want to turn it over. But before I get started, I want to not get started and just, you know, hand it over to someone else. This is a tactic that a lot of them will use. What they're trying to do is basically get you to like stick up for yourself. Like, especially like, I'm going to insult you so that you then stick up for yourself and are like, no, I do want this. Like, does that make sense? So them saying, well, I don't know, you might be a little bit too wounded to hear this. Like, mm, you might not be strong enough or I only want hustlers. I only want on my team. Like, I don't know if that's you, but then you're like, no, I, no, I am. I'm not 
wounded. I'm not too damaged. Like, I can do it. To my lovely wife, the one who I did not get to spend Valentine's Day with last night because the roads were closed and I could not get home to her to bring her some dried vegetation or uh, any calories to tell her I love her, but she knows I love her. We'll be together in a few hours. I think the roads are open, baby. So I'm coming home right after this. But Tia, uh, why don't you come on? Dried vegetation or calories? Is this is this man a dog trapped in a human body? Are we in one of those dog human body swapping movie scenarios right now? Why is he talking like that? Well, that's right. You're going out on tour this week, and I, I know you want to invite the people to all your tour stops. That's right. Well, good morning. I hope you all had a great love day and you shared the love with your spouse and your kids and made them feel extra love. I think we should be sharing the love every day. I think it was a good, it's a good marketing plan for to keep the economy going. So um, anyway, I am so, so excited and pumped up and anticipating um, this next weekend. I, um, every year I ask myself, uh, where, where do I need to be boots on the ground to be with the people? Uh, Doug and I have built the organization uh, to where it is today, being boots on the ground. Um, if you followed our journey at all, we traveled across this nation back in uh, 2019, uh, went to 25 cities. Uh, we really believe in the power of the gathering of the people. And so I was planning on doing this uh, tour later after Level Up um, and into May, but I felt like I needed to pull it into the now. So I will be heading out on tour to one of the areas that I have been wanting to go to for, for a very, very long time. So... Can everybody see my screen? This is where we're heading out to. I am um, kicking off Friday night um, in Apex. I think that's how I say it, North Carolina, which is really close to Raleigh. I fly into Raleigh. We do a Health and Hope and a Coach Connect. So that night is not just for potential clients, uh, friends that want to know more about what our program actually provides, but also it is a Coach Connect. So bring potential coaches into the room. The first hour will be more client focused. The second hour will be coach focused. The next morning um, on the 18th, I'm doing a community walk in Goldsboro, North Carolina with Miss Cindy Pate and JR. And I think Laura Blizzard, they're going to be there in the room too. So that the thing with this tour is I really need you to RSVP because we want to plan for you. So I will pop a link in the chat um, after I talk here so that you can know where to go get registered. We will have a beehive gathering, which is a, just a, more of a women's kind of gathering where we just talk about our faith, our purpose. And it, this is an opportunity to bring people outside of our Optavia world to come and to collaborate and do greater things together. Then the 18th, I do another Health and Hope. We're doing it from three to five in the afternoon because it's Saturday and we want people to be able to be with their families and stuff, but that will be a Health and Hope, uh, real focused on clients and, um, and also like uh, talking about potential coaching and, and what that will look like. So 19th, you can come to church with me if you want to. The, and then the 19th in the evening, I'm flying over to Knoxville, Tennessee. I've never been to Knoxville. I'm super excited to be boots on the ground in Knoxville. Um, I rented out a space at a coffee house there. So please get registered. Megan Renna's driving up to hang out and do that with me and Joyce. You know what I've noticed is a lot of these MLM people will use terms like boots on the ground or in the trenches or battle buddy as if to imply that what they are doing is anything like combat, which is hilarious because obviously it's not. What you're doing is essentially scamming people, but what you're doing is talking to people in coffee shops. You're doing sales. You're trying to convince someone to join the multi-level marketing company that you are involved with. Like, stop calling it boots on the ground and in the trenches. What trenches? Are you even wearing boots? Are you even on the ground? Probably not. It's probably all lies. With me the whole time, so she'll be sharing her story as well. The 20th, you can see another beehive gathering at the 21st and the 22nd beehive gathering. So um, what I do have to say about Knoxville, I need you to RSVP to those two events so I can just plan for you. And also in the Nashville area with the specs because they, it's in their home and we wanna make sure 
that we take really good care of the people that are coming in the room so we can prepare for them. So, and then um, the 22nd, I'm having a power packed uh, nine to noon a beehive gathering with Natalie Burt and Megan Cody is coming out. I've got a mute, the music artist, Meredith Andrews. So here's the thing. I believe that people need to be in community. And this is where the integration happens. This is, I'm going to be talking about level up out on tour. I'm going to be talking about awaken. I'm going to be talking about, this is come out to the bigger conferences, but this is where I'm going to be talking about awaken girl. I thought you were in Octavia, but what's happening. Also one of the main reasons why they want to be able to see people in person. I feel like it's obvious, but it's like she said, people want to be a part of like a community and a community is important when you're in this type of industry where it is so cult like, yes, community is important. So it's important for people to see you and check in with you. And it's a lot harder to quit something when you do have that connection with people. And realistically, yes, you are going to have a deeper connection with someone if you have actually met them in person. And so, you know, that person, that high rank, a very high ranking, clearly person giving you that attention and, you know, talking to you. I mean, y'all have seen how some of these Mon 8 people are treated like they are absolute celebrities if they're at the top of the MLM. Like, good God. In Mon 8, they treat Jacqueline Ortega like it's it's so cringe. They treat her like a celebrity. And no offense to her, she is a nobody. Energy happens in their lives and breakthrough begins to happen. So... I believe uh, we need to be beat out, be boots on the ground. So I'm modeling it from the front. Um, Doug, thanks for letting me take a little moment to share my crazy tour life. And um, this is my, my passion and my joy is being with people. So I hope I get to see many of you out on tour. Yeah, and if you can't go, send your people, get them in the room, folks. Get, get people in bigger rooms that expands their thinking. A um, couple of the events Tia talked about are more faith focused. Just know what you're inviting people to. Uh, but Tia, uh, her beehive events are incredible. They're community focused. Um, they don't have a big agenda other than getting the right people together and in the room. And then we believe conversations take place and uh, it funnels to where, um, you know, they might need to go and uh, those doors are open. And so, uh, yeah, send your people, get registered. I think Tia's dropping the link in the chat. It's going to be good. All right. I'm all over the map today because I got something burning in my heart. I want to share with you guys. Real quick, Optavia income disclosure statement. Um, you can see the earnings. You can you can see it. These figures are not guaranteed. They're projections. At least he's even showing it because a lot of the times they'll just show the link and they'll go quickly over a little disclaimer. But I mean, he's at least showing it, which is good, which is also confusing because it's like this says that it was only for top reps. So why are you showing the income disclosure statement when it's supposed to be people who are already in the MLM? They should already know that. So let's say roughly 55% of Octavia reps make less than $2,500 a year. That's annually. The food is so expensive and you're buying it every month. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say it's safe to say that most people in the Octavia multi-level marketing company do not to make any money. So that's... That's unfortunate. Guarantees or projections or expected earnings or profits. And the income levels represent do not ex include expenses. Independent Optavia coaches may have occurred in building their businesses. Uh, Optavia makes no guarantee of financial success. Success with Optavia results from successful sales efforts. God, I love that hey, word, sales. I don't see here. Um, Tia, you're, you're talking, but hey, you want to you come back on and say something? Are you sure? <laughs> you're back off mute. What are you saying? Just keep going. Thank you. You want to read this? <laughs> uh, it's, it's made with successful sales efforts. See our life. I know there are some people who can work with their spouse. And like, if you like, if you're working like alone or in a more like creative space, I feel like it's kind of easier. Like we've gotten to the point where Tony does help me with more stuff. Like, I think that's a little bit different. And then there's like certain stuff with when I like up my production value of and like my setup and stuff like, yes, I'm going to have him like come in and help me and like monitor certain things like while I'm filming sometimes maybe, but like I'd be able to work with him in that sense. But people who have to be like, I don't know, I guess like front, more like client facing basically, cause like I'm not, I guess. I would hate to work with my spouse like this. Like, I mean, I love the man so much, but I don't know, I guess it's maybe because like we're so different. Like he's such a man of few words and my career is talking to a camera in a room by myself. Very different people. <laughs>
But I don't know. I just, I can't imagine like working in an MLM or in like a sales industry, like with my spouse where like we have to do it together. And like, that's part of the appeal to it. I don't know. I just wouldn't want like my, all my stuff out there, you know? I might as well just stay at Flagstaff for a couple of days. No, she would give me a lot of grace. I hope. All right. Let's get to work. There's going to be 51 minutes. Here we go. All right, before I start, this whole thing has been built since about midnight last night and uh, early this morning at about 5.30 a.m. I even chose for the first time in a long time to move my workout to this evening uh, because I could not sleep. And I ended up up all morning putting a lot of this together, taking this from my brain. So what I'm saying is if you see typos, which you will, uh, I did not have an editor go through this like I normally try to do for my PowerPoint. So for those of you that have issues with Doug's typos, guess what? Why y'all are spell checking and picking apart my PowerPoint that I did in the middle of the night, I'm out signing up all your clients. Because guess what? I'm keeping my focus on people and not trying to do absolutely everything perfect. Okay. You're like, Doug, are you serious? No, I'm not signing up your clients, but I might. I was Googling... Uh, 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 a, a truth salad and it was interesting a few different things came up dress to kill <laughs> the truth about is that a baby's anus that is a baby's anus i can't wait to see what he has in store for us like where what turn is this going to take and then i was also thinking about taking your temperature and you know i think there's a few different ways of taking your temperature some of you are going to like maybe the beginning of this call and uh this is gonna push your buttons a little bit and, uh, you know, you prefer it under the arm or just under the tongue. And some of you just need it right in the butt. And, uh, and that's what today's really going to be about. So you take... Don't all of us just need a little something in the butt? Uh, you know what, Doug? You got me. Yeah, at whatever level you want it or you can handle it. And I understand that I'm not for everybody, but I believe that the goals and the desires that some of you have expressed, uh, it's important that we talk a little bit about the journey and what, the, what, what it actually looks like. So we're going to serve up a little bit of a truth salad. You take your temperature as... Uh, as much as you can handle it. And um, you know what? Don't shoot the messenger. I just reveal the truth. In 14 years, I've seen patterns. I've seen every single season of Optavia. And uh, I've been, this is my 14th February. So it's it's right on pace for actually where it should be. It's a short month and it's very heavily backloaded. And um, end of February is going to continue to just explode. And then March is going to be a tidal wave. And um, for those that are actually doing the work, Tia put this uh, text uh, she actually put the actual uh, quote, but the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Um, she was sent that over to Tia and I, uh, Tia, she sent it over to uh, Kevin and Becca and Tia. Oh, gosh, I can't get my words right. Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do. Up in the middle of the night, I was awakened to the harvest is plenty, but I believe the gratitude as an Optavia coach, the understanding of what we're really doing here. And often the work is few. This is a letter in, uh, from year 2000 to 2009. Uh, I opened a business with my father and uh, he got me into the business. I'm very grateful for it. Um, and I, I opened a business on the west side of Portland. There's a furniture store. Many of you guys may know my story. And um, we couldn't afford the building. We couldn't pay the rent. But I want to take you back because sometimes the reason I'm so obsessed and people ask me like, Doug, why are you the way you are? Or like, I got this question and I think I shared it in a future slide, but it's like, I wish I could be like you. We couldn't afford the rent and we couldn't afford the building. Sir, that's the same thing. Why'd you go into business? Why, why, why did you open the business and get that spot if you couldn't afford the rent? Sounds like you make wonderful business decisions. I can't wait to listen to whatever else you have to say about business. I could post things like you do. Well, if you lived a minute in my shoe and you understood that you carry the weight of a multi-million dollar lease on the back of your shoulders. If you spent a minute in my shoe, only one, one shoe. Cause he spent the rest of the money on the rent. I had no out. I, and my only way out was suicide. Maybe. I don't know, and I'm not trying to make, make my story worse to what you're going through, but if you've had literally hundreds of thousands of dollars. That escalated real quickly. <laughs> like, what the f If you were in my shoes and your only way out was offing yourself, sir, that wasn't your only, that wasn't your only way out. Like, you could have, you could have just, I'm sure you could have just gone and talked to the bank and been like, hey, listen, we actually have to dissolve the business. Here's the money back from the loan. And then we're going to pay back what we owe. I feel like this isn't just going to be like a sob story. This is going to be super unhinged. We started out with, with stuff in the butt. So that's how you know it's going to just go all downhill from here. 
basically. In credit card debt, you might get a glimpse of the gratitude that I hold for Optavia and the gratitude that this life that was given to me of coaching that I, why I don't take it for granted. Because also before I get into this is, you know, there's some people on the line that are like, man, remember when a couple of a years ago, man, it was really hopping. Um, you mean back when we were a $700 million company or a $500 million company when it was really hopping compared to and when you were making five or six or $7,000 a month, and now you're frustrated because you're making 15 grand a month or 17 or 20 grand a month. You mean back in those days? Because now it's so funny how when things are on the up and up and actually our company is very fragile, like it was seven and 10 years ago. And we were a very underknown company. And we were, when I started, we were a $200 million company. And it was like, bam, let's go. And we get to be a $1.5 billion company. And we're like, does anybody want to even get healthy anymore? We're a $1.5 billion company. Many of you are making more money than you've ever made in your entire life. And you begin to look back and go, oh man, what's wrong? Does anybody want to get healthy? My business is down. Oh, you mean down compared to what? Down compared to your highest income, which was maybe in January a month ago, or maybe last January, or did we forget where we came from seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago? I don't think they understand that or it sounds like what he's describing is that the people they're recruiting are expecting something sustainable. And being in sales is not sustainable at all. And working for yourself is not sustainable. N not, okay, let me rephrase that. It's not not sustainable. And keep in this correction. Pretty please, I love you. It's not not sustainable. It's not stable. <laughs> That's what I meant to say, because it, it really isn't. I mean, that's why I really like when there's those reels that show, and I know some people don't like them, but that's okay. But I like it for other influencers when influencers or people who work on social media, whatever, and do freelance stuff will put on like a reel. It'll say like what I made this year or last year as a blank. And it's usually jobs like you work for yourself, you're, you know, a virtual assistant, you do like content creator coaching, you, you know, are like a, a personal trainer, a nutritionist, a, whatever, you work for yourself. And a lot of influencers have been doing it too. I've always wanted to do it, but I don't know. I, I get like nervous about it because y'all know, like people are weird about YouTubers talking about how much money they make, but it's, that's their problem, not mine, whatever. But like, I love those because it's like, oh, like they made $12,000, again, revenue, they made $12,000 that month. And then the next month, it's like five, the next month, it's 10, the next month, it's three, the next month, it's six, like, it's so much of a roller coaster. It is absolutely crazy. And that's why I always make the point to like, thank y'all so much for supporting my sponsors, because I'm not joking and not exaggerating when I say this, if I did not have sponsors, I would not be able to do this full time at all. I would not be able to pay myself, my assistant, my editor, my, and I couldn't do this. I mean, I could probably do my job without an assistant. It just really helps me a lot, but I wouldn't be able to do this without an editor. I wouldn't be able to do this without my sponsors. They basically pay, they pay for my payroll is what they do. So yeah, it, but I don't think people understand when they get into an MLM that it's gonna be all over the place. It's not stable. And that's what happens when you work for yourself, one. And then two, when you're in a sales-based position or in industry and this guy's weird. We were hustling and we were on the up and up when our company had no money and we were just trying to figure it out. We were out slinging Metafast all over town and we're like, oh, you mean back then were we a more fragile company? But back then it's funny how we feel like we compare it to, man, remember back in the, the old days a few years ago when I became a coach, I came in in the steroid era, right? The steroid era of 16, 17, 18 when we were a $800 million, $700 million company. Now we're a $1.5 billion company and man. Is it Octavia or is it Metafast that is like that is making that money. How eloquent do I sound? <laughs> Ew, my brain don't work. My February is just not off to the fastest start that I wanted it to. What's happening? What's wrong with me? And we begin to start looking within and start thinking something's wrong when actually it's better than it has ever been. So why I say the harvest is plenty, but the gratitude, the understanding and the work or is there a few, a little bit of play on scripture there, is I had to write many, many, many letters like this to my landlord. I was going through some old hard drives yesterday, looking for some stuff for Level Up, and I found this old letter, one of the many letters that I wrote asking for a rent reduction for the building I was in from $18,600 a month to a new monthly payment of $15,000. By the way, this grant, this, act, this grant was denied, okay? I said in here, please understand this is critical without significant adjustments, such as what I'm asking, it is difficult to see how it would be possible for Office of Furniture and Dining Rooms Unlimited to be in business one year from now and counting at the place we're going. 
as hard as it is for me and my pride as a person or a business owner to type this letter. If I got that as a landlord, I would have just been like, that sounds like a personal problem, buddy. Like you can't, you can't, you can't afford the rent. Then you shouldn't be renting the building, right? Like, I, I mean, I get it, like do whatever you can, but sounds like you make bad business decisions. That's why a lot of businesses start out online before they are like in their house or whatever, before they get like a physical location so that they can build up the capital and be able to actually get the business off the ground and start making money and have that capital to, I don't know, pay your bills. This um, to you and a few others, I know I'm just doing everything I can to keep my business going and not forfeit on agreements. If you notice up here, it also said, um, uh, during this time, I've borrowed lines of credit and unsecured debt. In addition, I've decreased my personal wages, got every possible expense in the company. So I've written letters like this. I know what it's like to live a life of debt for 11 consistent years, never, ever seeing the black. It's interesting, that same day that I wrote that letter on December 31st of 2007, I sat down and wrote some goals out and I found these yesterday too. So he's, his, his sob story is, I mean, first of all, glorious, is that he didn't turn a profit with his business for like 11 years and he was in a lot of debt. Sounds like, again, you don't make good business decisions. I get it, maybe things don't work out sometimes, but like maybe you should close the business if you have been in debt and haven't turned a profit for 11 years. My goal was to retire 75,000 of the $185,000 in debt. That was just in credit card. That didn't, that, that wasn't the lease in the building. That was nothing. My goal was so bad. I wanted to give my amazing couple of employees a, a raise uh, by 10%. And I couldn't give raises or Christmas bonuses that year. I just wanted literally all the bills in my company to maybe even caught up. Cause at this time I was 45 to 60 days defaulting on every single bill coming in. So when you see a picture of T and I at my parents' house on the left-hand side, actually, that's my grandma's house because we couldn't afford Christmas that year because my mom bought Christmas presents, Christmas dresses for the girls. You can see just Doug and Tia just trying to figure out another year. I actually did what they said. Let's set some goals. Very unmeasurable. I don't compare my story to yours, but I want you to know sometimes when I'm asking you to do what I'm about ready to ask you to do, where I came from. I'm not comparing my story to yours and saying that it's worse or anything like that. But the reason why you're sharing this story is so that people will see, oh, wow, you did mess up. Oh, wow, your life did suck. Oh, you were poor. You were poor just like me. And now you're not. And now you can, you know, that's why I should join this or that's why I need to work harder because it's possible because you were poor and sad and lived in a basement and couldn't afford Christmas and I can't either right now. And so now I need to work harder. Like I live a life of being obsessed because I will never forget going down to the furniture um, warehouse in the middle of the night to do inventory and taking Amaya with me and letting her ride her scooter because it was the only time I could see her. I didn't get time with my daughter. I worked 60 hours a week in my furniture store. That meant you do not see your kids. So yes, that's me and Amaya taking a picture with a digital camera. Not the digital camera. Why did he say it like that? <laughs> that's weird. Christmas party down here in the bottom right, me and Tia. Okay, couldn't get bonuses, but I did take the, the, the few employees out to a good dinner. And you can see up on the right-hand side, me with baby Kate. Just another night, another miserable dude, falling asleep, overeating, getting ready to start the grind back another day. You can see the look in my face. I don't even know if he must have grabbed that. So you know why when Optavia comes into my hands inadvertently that, yeah, I hopped right on program. And yeah, that's us getting celebrated as new national directors in 2011. It hasn't been a pretty journey ever since. But when you get access to a little bit of money and you start making. Were you a poor fat loser who doesn't have time for their kids? Well, guess what? Do I have an opportunity for you? You can now wear a hideous pistachio looking dress and suck in a lot in mirror selfies at the gym. Don't you want to live the life we live? Don't you? Or do you want to be a poor fat loser? Which is more you are making in the furniture business. You begin to see, gosh, what, what could I possibly do with this business? What could I possibly do if I actually took Optavia seriously and I was to put, oh crap, do it here. if I was to actually work my Optavia business, like I worked my furniture store. But the problem is Optavia is not a 60 hour a week job, but I treated it like one. And so people were like, Doug, how did your business go? I found that there's a reel on my Instagram that shows me talking about a Ross belt. I wore that Ross belt last year at Level Up. One, I love that belt, it's red. Number two is, I still shop at Ross sometimes. Why? Because it reminds me of where I used to buy every single bit of 
clothes. That right there, that black shirt, those big old husky pants, Ross, okay? It takes me back to where I came from. And so, yeah, I, I get a little passionate about this subject because at some point- If I'm so rich, why do I still shop at Ross? Because it keeps me humble. What? <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Oh my God. Hey, this is just truth salad. This is just a thermometer up your anus, all right? Sometimes you need it. Sometimes you like it. Point every coach stops putting in the hours that once got them to where they were, they fall back into managing and maintaining something. And then we start hashtagging integrated life. And I think that's a good thing. Life of freedom. And then we're like, dang it, compliance is all over me for saying, you know, life of freedom. And so I, I, I don't think January, February, and March of 2023 is a time to hashtag everything integrated life. And I'm not trying to put my work on any of you, but you've shared with me some of your goals. So I feel like I need to share with you what actually creating some of the incomes that you might see, what they take. Because at some point, we all fall back into working 12 to 14 hours a week. And if you're on the up and up right now, I'm so excited for you. Don't stop. Someone said, Doug, how many sponsors should I, how many coaches should I sponsor? I'll tell you when to stop. Because the moment you say, I'm going to stop sponsoring, I'm going to stop supporting clients, I'm going to really focus on what I have, is the moment you turn off that water faucet and it'll never get started again, or it's really hard to. So you can never stop. That's just it. End of sentence. You can never stop. Never stop recruiting. You know why? Because then he would actually have to still shop at Ross. Stop supporting clients. I'm going to really focus on what I have is the moment you turn off that water faucet and it'll never get started again, or it's really hard to. So I typed this last night. I put it on the Real Talk page. Only 157 of you saw it because it was late at night. Just imagine how big of a business you would build if you truly didn't care or fear what people thought of you. You just lived your authentic self out loud. The number one thing most coaches say to me is, I wish I could post what you post, but I can't get away. Somebody's off mute, hang tight here. I wish I could post what you post, but I can't get away with it. You mean, so I said, you mean you're scared what your pastor or your religious parents or sister Susie is going to disapprove? How long are you gonna let them rule your life and live rent free in your head is my question for you today. Post the photo, post the real, post your passion and say it. The world needs more of you, the real you, and not the fake or 30% of you. Folks, you guys have been exposed. If you're on this call, your life has been massively increased and, and, and changed by Optivia. I don't care who you are. It has been changed. All right. Keep yourself off mute if you guys can, please. Keep yourself on mute. Sorry. Your life has been changed. And I, and I would say shame on me every time I get quiet about it. Shame on me the moment I stop posting. Shame on me for taking four to five days and getting emotional. The other day, a couple of weeks ago, T and I were having a, a bad weekend, bad day. And we sat there and laughed about today's bad day and what we're going through now compared to what we were. Have we gotten that soft? And I think sometimes we have. So here's a video I sent yesterday running on the treadmill. This is my little community center gym up here in Flagstaff. I sent this video to somebody yesterday and well, I'm going to play it for you because you guys want to know. I'm not going to ask you to do anything I'm not doing myself. I'm always going to try to lead from the front. So here's what my videos sound like, and then I'll let you know the results. Brent, what's up, brother? Long time no talk, man. I love following you and your wife. Everything you're about, I can tell. We're very like-minded. It's awesome. Hey, I want to say, uh, I want to invite you guys down to our conference next month. Hey, Brad, I love following y'all. You know, from your car to dinner last night. Looks like we got a lot in common. Looks like we have the same dog. I took your trash out to the street. You left your light on in your bedroom. Hope you don't mind. I watched. Uh, I want to invite you guys down to our conference next month, March 9th through the 11th. That T and I host every year. It's for our health program, but this year it's more universal. So just leadership, pastoral growth, mindset, family, marriage, stuff. stuff. Crap. Isn't it interesting how he says our health program and he doesn't even mention the name of Octavia? Like, why is it got to be about leadership and relationship and God and past pastoral sounds like custodial? Like, what are y'all doing? Are you a pastor? I sure as hope not. Brent, what's up? March 9th through the 11th. That T and I host every year program, but this year it's more universal. So just leadership, pastoral growth, mindset, family, marriage type stuff. Also some health stuff mixed in. I want to invite you guys, if you want to come down, my treat, totally comp, the conference for you. Hang out with us for a couple of days. I'll uh, VIP or whatever, backstage, introduce you to people. Let me know if you're interested, man. Just, uh, you're always showing up on my timeline. And I'm like, you know, I got to reach out. At least say, hey, you're welcome. So anyway, God bless you, man. Keep doing what you do. Let me know if you're interested. All right, so there's the video I sent. 
just so some of you saw that, like, well, Doug, that's easy for you to say you're the host of the conference. Great. If you do that with somebody else and you tell them you'll VIP them and you'll bring them backstage to inter introduce them to a few people, you let me know who that is and I will let you and your guests backstage and I will shake their hand and take a picture with them or whatever you want yourself. Take a picture with them? Who are you? Why would they want to take a picture with you, sir? In your tank top, in your flat bell hat. What are you doing? T-Pain wants his hat back. I'm sorry, T-Pain. Let's not disrespect T-Pain, okay? It takes a genius to rhyme mansion with Wisconsin, all right? Let's put some respect on his name. Thank you. I love him. Again, I don't have special privileges here. I'm right. I'm literally registering $299 twice for a couple, and they're coming from Texas to join. And guess what? Here was his response. I haven't talked to this guy. Shame on me. I haven't even started a ton of conversations. Here was his response. Probably an hour later. Man, that'd be amazing. We'd love to come. Let me check on Casey's schedule, but we'd love to make it happen. A few minutes later, she said she's down, so we'd love to come. Guess what? Me, him, and Tia and his wife are all meeting on Zoom tonight at 6 o'clock. Folks, this isn't hard. What's hard is getting over ourselves, getting over our pride, getting over our insecurities of what's Brent going to think. He's going to think I want him to. He's going to think what he's going to think. My duty is to invite because I've been convicted. Remember, the, the, the harvest is plenty, but I believe the gratitude, the passion, the what's happened in our life through Optavia is few. I, I believe the lack of gratitude, the lack of passion is few. And that's why the work, we don't want to do the work sometimes when we're not doing the right things. I posted this last night. I think 140 of you have saw it. Follow this gal on mine. Her name is Christina Beeves. <laughs> I said, in my opinion, this gal was a, if this gal was a health coach, she'd be global in six months. In fact, I know she would. Her conviction with her consistency and her passion is infectious. She's bold and doesn't care what people think. She's convicted to share her way or cause with the world, and no one is changing her mind. That's what people are drawn to. They, the, <laughs> there you go, the are drawn to boldness and winners who are convicted. P.S., she's also slightly annoying if you watch some of her videos. Annoying is good because if you're not pissing people off, at least a few people off, you ain't doing enough right. And guys, this gal is annoying. Christina, when you become a coach, what you're doing work is working because I like watching your videos because I don't even know what you're selling, but I almost want to buy some and I want to join your team. But let's take a look at old beeves. Let me see if I can find the old beeves here. Hang tight here. Let's find the beeves. Let me pull her up here. Go over to my Instagram. Oh, there's the old beeves. All right. Oh, there we go. Here's the old beeves. Let's watch. Let's watch old beeve in action. Four things that every gym rat has in their car. All right, let's see what else the old Beavs is doing. He says she's annoying. She's not annoying. She's just using social media and marketing and marketing herself and using trending sounds and being more on, so to speak. Like, I mean, he can think she's annoying. That's fine. I mean, every, everyone has their people that they like to follow and that they don't like to follow. I mean, there's a lot of people online that I'm like, oh my God, you're annoying. Stop. Like being annoying is good. No, being captivating is good. Being likable on social media is good. What else is old Beav, Beav up to? She's giving her opinions. Um, excuse me, what the actual f <laughs> Seriously, she's amazing. She doesn't care what people think. Y'all should have saw her during COVID. That's when I found her, popped up in my newsfeed. Holy crap, she doesn't care what people think. She doesn't even have that massive of a following. But guess what? She's got an opinion. She's convicted. And she tells you how she can help you. And guess what? People are buying it because they're buying her. They're not buying her product. They're buying her. Exactly. Summer, go beefs. Cheers to the beefs. She's going to gain 850 new followers from Optivia. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. This thing might go till noon. Yeah, not a fan of this guy. It's the first thing. I, I'm pretty sure first time I've ever seen anything of his. But speaking of annoying, he seems annoying. I'm very big on the, you know, I'm not for everyone type of thing. But there's a difference between knowing who you are, not letting people change you, not caring about others' opinions, but then also being self-aware and knowing the difference between someone just being 
to you and someone being like, hey, like you missed the mark with this or this actually was offensive or, you know, maybe like trying to educate you on something. There's a complete difference there. And a lot of people in MLMs don't understand that. A lot of people on social media in general don't understand that. I gotta get beeves off my screen here. I got too many screens open. Okay, here we go. You guys having fun with this? Let me, let me, let me actually just stop and do a little, uh, a little, little bit of a check. I'll light up the chat. Tell me if you guys are okay, because we, we actually haven't even gotten started yet. All right. Not too many people logging off. Oh, we are down a couple, or are we up a couple. It's okay. Hey, hey, y'all, this is not for everybody, and I'm okay with that. Okay. So here's some sample incomes from January bonuses. Are you bonuses only? Does it motivate you or frustrate you? You can answer if you want, or I just want you to more think about this, because we're going to start taking our temperature. Hopefully this motivates good. I love the motivation. I love, actually, it's very important that we answer these. I love, it motivates you. Good, Tammy. Good, Isabella. Yes. Yes, Alicia. I'm glad this motivates you. Because guess what? When I owned a furniture store and I was that deep in debt and Tia started bringing in checks of $863 and then $2,400, I was like, girl, we struck gold. But it's funny how, how, how that could be, we can get so complacent with that income. Or here's another mistake coaches do. They go buy a, they go buy a Tahoe. Like the, the sample though, like this, and I understand doing that because of compliance and you know, it's against the rules and you can't show, you make income claims, things like that. But like obviously seeing just made up numbers of making any money a month is going to motivate someone or of, you know, what more than what they're used to is going to motivate someone. Why do the bookcases behind him look like ancient canoes? And what baby are we sending down the Nile when we're in that thing? I, they, they start taking out payments too soon, but that's not the, this training, okay? So good, I'm glad this motivates you or frustrates you. Awesome, next slide. And some of you aren't gonna answer this if it motivates you or frustrates you because you feel like if you put the truth down, you're like, man, am I not being gratitude? No, the truth is if it frustrates you, I would say it frustrates you because some of you guys have been here a long time. Others of you are just getting here and you're like, freaking hey man, let's go. Motivate you or frustrate you. Look at that global director making eight grand a month. Global director making 10 grand a month. Again, that is your revenue, not your profit. And uh, certification bonus, that is really hard work for me to say. So all of these bonuses, all these bonuses that are like actually something, like most of their revenue is from having a team, from recruiting. That's such like, isn't it supposed to be about food? Yeah, so oh, it's over like 70% of their income is from having a downline. No, thank you. Like, ugh. These incomes are the pain cave, I call them. You know what the pain cave is? $2,500 a month to seven grand a month. And 10 to 22 grand a month are the pain caves. Two of the most, the longer you're in between those two numbers in Optavia, the more complacent you get, the more frustrated you get, the more you start blaming, the more you start asking what's wrong, what's wrong with me, have I lost my touch? The longer you stay there, you start overanalyzing everything. What once motivated you, now you're just living in like, maybe I need to go get some side income. Maybe I need to start a coaching business on the side and start pimping out my services because 10 grand a month, 15 grand a month. Maybe I need to start a real business on the side and actually offering a service that could be helpful and that I probably am not qualified to actually do. But could you imagine? Maybe I should go become a certified nutritionist, like actual nutritionist and start a business, which like doing that online, you can make a lot of money, especially if you got good clients. You can make a lot of money for sure. 20 grand a month isn't good enough anymore. Oh, and then we go, is Optavia not working anymore as good as it once was? So we need to supplement. Why I can say this is because when I was trapped in the pain cave, I started going back trying to figure out little side deals because I started taking, I started getting a little taste of the good life and I wanted it faster because what I'm about to show you next, you're like, it's not happening fast enough. It's, it's been a year here. It's been two years here. It's pain cave. Now I'm getting up into some different stuff here. And also some of you guys are having some ahas because you're realizing rank actually doesn't have much to do with income. You notice that there's a, there's a global director making 66 grand a month. Will this man figure out how to use his fudging PowerPoint? Like what's he doing? Oh, and there's a global director making 8,500 a month. Stop focusing on rank folks and focus on people. Babe, you're on the wrong slide again. And focus on people. You focus on people, the rank takes care of itself. And trust me, the money sure does too. Okay, he's like focus on people, which means recruiting, obviously. But if you focus on people, the rank takes care of itself. Yeah, duh, because you're recruiting people and then you're able to get to a higher rank. Like, duh, <laughs> that's how an MLM works, dummy. I feel like we're looking at like, 
what's it called? The ink blot, the the Rorschach like ink blot test. It's like, what do you see now? What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? What is it? Are you mad about it? Does this frustrate you? How does this make you feel? This is like a therapy session for me, but in purgatory. Also, something we need to touch on, something can frustrate you, but also motivate you. Absolutely. Take some inventory here. A coach is either coming off mute or no. <laughs> I had to have some fun. I don't want you guys to think like, I'm like, gosh, for the first time on, you guys are like, dude, this dude's a major ace. If you're the host of the Zoom call, why don't you just make it to where no one can be unmuted. Like, have you ever run a Zoom call before, Gregory? Because it seems like you haven't. His name's not Greg. I already forgot. Doug. Doug Wood. Doug, you would. <laughs> or maybe you don't like it at all. It's okay. I'm, I'm not attached. I'm not here to have you like me. I'm here to help you. So he just starts trying to like over justify and make himself feel better. That's fine. You don't have to like me. I don't like you. I don't like you. You think I w you're ugly anyways. <laughs> Like when you turn down a guy, turn down their advances and they're like, Psh, you're ugly anyways. I wouldn't want to go out with you. Sir, you were just flirting with me and trying to pick me up. Like, no, you're ugly and fat. Bye. I don't want you on my team. I'm here to help you. So, you know, most of the time when people are helping you and very few people will say the truth to us in our life. And um, I, I talk about it in my book, but I'm very grateful for the few people I have in my truth corner that won't risk a friendship with me. I'm sorry. Did he just say that he has a book? We're going to need to get our hands on that book. We're going to need to do that. Something that they can say and share with me in love because they have that trust. So if I've earned that trust with you, let's take a look. Coach is either growing, managing, or dying. Okay, it's very simple. You're either in growth mode, you're in management mode, and you're in dying mode. Rank has nothing to do with either of these three. Like I always say, if you ain't lying, you ain't trying. Or no, what is it? If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. If you ain't first, you're last. Okay. You can be an IPD and be managing. You can be in an IPD and be dying. I didn't say your business is dying or it might be, or your yourself, your, maybe it's your body. Your mindset is dying. You're in management mode. I'm going to control what I have. I'm living the integrated life. I'm never, ever, ever going to miss one event now because I missed two events three years ago. I'll never miss my daughter's dance recital ever again. So I'm living this king integrated life. And I believe, you know what? Some of you have earned the right to. And good for you. And others of you are not there yet. And you're in the growing. And let's talk about what this looks like. So number one is an accountable coach. There are three coaches here that I'm going to describe. There's the accountability coach. There's the all-in coach. And there's the obsessed. Number one is accountable. What is an accountability coach? And none of these are bad. And none of these are better than the other. Remember, you came into Optavia getting what you wanted out of it. Doug became a coach for accountability. Then when Tia started making money, I was like, this is cool. It keeps our daughter in private school. That's all we need to do. I was a coach for accountability. I ended up wanting more once I became aware of more. So there's no fault in one of these are better than the other. I just, it's important that you and I know and understand where we are at. That's all I want today, okay, is for you to know, be honest with yourself where you're at. Accountability coach says these trainings motivate me and I like the way I feel after them. My social media, you could probably find three to four things about health, possibly might even find my own before and after photo posted in the last week or two. Okay, it's some, I'm just going to tell you right now before I go any further, there are IPDs and globals doing accountability coach actions. And there are senior coaches on here right now that are doing obsessed actions. So where your rank at, I want you to put yourself back in the mind of what am I doing? What do I have enough proof to show for? Because in 14 years, I've moved in through every season of these, okay? You can usually tell. I, I have a heart. I don't have a good poker face, so you can usually tell when I'm obsessed. How much does this call suck? Be honest. Raise your hand. On a scale from one to what you would do to Johnny Sins. Don't act like you don't know who that is, you dirty, dirty girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, from, a, from that scale, how much does this call suck? I'd say like an eight. So boring. You had me at anal thermometer. And now you don't really have me at all, honestly. But guess what? I have good news and good news. We got 25 more minutes of this. <laughs> Plot twist, it's not good news, it's worse. It's bad, it's bad and badder. I usually tell when I'm in an obsessed phase, okay? But yeah, and I was for five years. I didn't buy a new article of clothing for five years. I shopped at Ross when I did have to buy something. Baby, what you got against Ross? It's not that bad. My outfit today is from Target. I'm here to help whoever reaches out to me including current clients and coaches. My phone is always on. I just love the Optavia community. Thanks so much for including me. Rank and money don't motivate me. I just don't want to gain my way back. I'm loving the habits of health and everything I'm learning through the program. 
extra spending money is awesome. So, there's so you don't care about the money, but extra spending money is awesome. Like the, none of this really makes sense. Like, so he's describing right now, like the three different types of coaches. I just don't get it. You wouldn't be recruiting people if you didn't care about money. There's accountability. Here's the I'm all in coach. And the reason that I, I, I named the all in coach, the all in coach is because everybody tells me they're all in. But then why does the income disclosure statement tell me? When a company is based on recruiting, and let's not say it's not, Jeffrey, because uh, <laughs> you haven't mentioned the product at all during this call. No, you've mentioned anal thermometers more than you've mentioned what the company sells. It's cute. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It's great. But like, what are, you, what are we doing here? We're recruiting. That's it's pretty blatant. That's what we're doing. <sighs> I take it back. I love this call. So that's why your income disclosure statement looks like diarrhea doo-doo. Because when a company is recruitment based, as this one is, as let's be honest, most MLMs are, people come into it and are like, oh, I can make money with blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, you can't rank up without recruiting people. So that's why it looks like poo. The incomes that I just showed you, the first couple pages are built on the all-in coaches, okay? Let's take a look at what those might look like. My social media is active and attractional. Now remember, all-in coaches also include the accountability, okay? So this is like a carryover, right? This is an upgrade from the accountability. I'm doing all the accountability stuff. And this is like my next level of, you know, I could have went with toe dipping, right? But okay, I'm getting in the pool here. My social media is active and attractional. I have scheduled client support every single week. I'm keeping my frontline volume above six. I'm registered and attending Level Up or Awaken. I have some goals that I'm working towards. I'm on most trainings, at least from my phone and somewhat active in my client or coach support pages. I'm not at my goal weight, but it's okay. It's a journey. I'm giving myself grace and I'm continuing towards my healthy habits. If my coaches call or text, I'm there if they need me for a Zoom or celebration, typically within one to three days. I just looked it up and I don't think attractional is a word. I'm keeping my FLQV above 6K. Don't know what that means. I think that means qualified volume. I don't know. Typically within one to three days. Of course, not before my golf appointment or my bowling or my four days a week date day with my wife. Okay, no, sorry. I'm adding too much commentary. If you were to add up my hours a week, I'm probably putting in 14 to 20. But how are you an all-in coach if you're only doing 14 to 20 hours a week? That's working part-time. And then he said before that if you're working like 14 to 20 hours, that you're not like putting it all in. Five to 10 new conversations. I'm starting five to 10 new conversations each day. And I'm in pursuit of people that might want our program. Okay. Before I move on, what I just described is very good. Okay. If, if half of you, and please hear me, this is not a passive aggressive statement. I just want us to, as a team here today in mid-February, we're six weeks into the best season of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the year, and we have six weeks left of what can set in the trajectory of the entire year. So why I'm having this truth salad is because if half of you were working the all-in what I just described, Rank ups in March and a little bit this month, but especially in March, will be exploding. Okay. If you just were doing that, because I know for a fact, I just described some of you that are all in and you're not even doing the all in stuff. You're like, Doug, I'm probably somewhere between accountability and all in, if I'm being completely truthful. That's okay. We want to be truthful with where we're at. I learned years ago, some of you don't like this, and Tia's not going to like me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I actually am not big in the belief business. I don't believe in a lot of things. I'm not talking about your faith. Everyone's just like, what I mean by that is you get positive affirmations. You just got to believe in yourself. No, you don't. You don't believe in yourself at all. I can believe that I'm going to walk to the top of the driveway right now in a foot of snow out there. But until I get up, I can either wear my dirty shoes or I can go put my snow boots on and walk out there and probably slip and fall a couple of times. I won't be there until I actually do the work of getting there. That's what I mean. You can believe. I, I love belief doesn't move the dial forward that much in this business. It helps. Okay. I, I believe if you do work, it builds belief because you're like, man, I just did X, Y, and Z. Like my coach suggested me doing that has to be like, what are the dumb, not, I don't want to say like I'm the dumbest things I've heard someone say, like no, sh just wishing and praying that something's going to happen. Isn't 
Like, that's not going to do anything. You have to actually do the thing and do the little things that get you to that point. Like, duh. But see how he set it up? He's like, this isn't passive aggressive. And some of y'all don't want to hear this. And I know my my wife doesn't want me to say this. So y'all aren't going to like this. Insert most obvious bland statement here. Like, wow, that was great, Craig. Thanks. Text your coach and tell them where you're at. I don't want you texting nothing because some of you are like, I'm all in. I don't want to hear it. Show me. Okay, but you don't even show me. Just show yourself. It'll be very clear who, who, who is because the actions, you can't deny the actions. Okay, so this is a good, good all in coach right here. What does the obsessed coach do? Okay, and, and this is rare. This is also nicknamed like the messy season. I'm in the messy season. You've heard that like no one accidentally goes executive director. It's a decision. Well, I'm describing what decision is, look, looks like because after you make a decision to be obsessed, 30 to 60 days, you will be executive director. It's not a matter of if, it's not a matter of belief, it's not a matter of prayer. It's a matter of you will, because if you do the action steps that you're that we train every Monday and every Saturday on boot camp, you will be executive director. It might take you three or four months instead of two months. It might take you six months. I don't think it's going to take you six. It's going to take four. Because if I was to say, I'll write you a check right now for $10,000 if you went executive director. But why are you training every week or twice a week? What do you, why? And it's the same stuff over and over again. If you went executive director by the end of February, many of you would still do it. Because Doug, if you're going to write me a check for 10 grand, if I'd go, you would go out and you would put the phone in front of your face and you'd do it. Does anybody hate me yet? Any Rotten Tomatoes coming in? I need to check. Summer, do I have any negative, any hate, hate mail coming in? This isn't like as blunt and not sugar-coated as like I thought it would be. Like it's not, it's really not what they are making it out to be. It's not like super shocking information that you can't handle, the truth salad that you can't swallow. It's not that. It's just bland information with that it's like, obviously, duh, why am I here? This could have been an email. I just love when people have like such an inflated sense of self that they're like, Oh my gosh, I'm such a truth teller. That's why people don't like me. No, people most likely don't like you because you're annoying and because you brand yourself as that when it's like, you're not giving anything of value whatsoever. You're just saying Pinterest quotes. What does the obsessed coach do? Okay, this is all the obsessed. Excuse me, this is all the all ins. Now we've added fuel to accountability and all in. The obsessed coach. You guys want to know really what I want to name this? And I told Becca yesterday and she gave me a look like, I don't think so. I was going to name it. <laughs> and so I was gonna name it watch me bitch <laughs> I just offended some of you oh my god you just offended so many people oh my god so quirky so zany oh Craig oh Craig you zany guy what are we gonna do with you I don't know I just I don't know you're just out of absolutely out of control but it's like it's not one of those things I'm gonna say it's like just watch me it's like hold my beer right hold my maples and brown sugar oatmeal Watch me, right? Yeah, some of you guys need to say, beach, take me to the beach, please. But you gotta earn the right to go to the beach. You gotta earn the right. So what does an obsessed coach do? Optavia and my goals right now consume my life. And before I go any further, you're gonna be like, I don't know, Doug, you're extremely out of balance. Well, good. Let me pause right here for a minute. Good. If you want the scale to move, not just in your waistline or your body, but if you want the scale for anything great to move, it takes extreme amount of effort to get anything moving. You ever seen those guys pull a big old Mack truck like two dudes? They can't even get it going. It takes them a minute and a half to get any roll. And then once they get it going, it takes extreme balance. You might pull ribs. You might pull. You're going to be out of touch. It, it, Here's what Obsessed looks like because T and I did this for five years and people wonder why we have the business we do because we were willing to do, I'm going to lay it out just like this. For us, it meant God, family, Optavia. You know what that meant? What God, family, meant, Optavia meant? God meant T and I are going to get up and pray together over our day every single morning. We're going to go to church on Sunday morning for an hour and a half and we're not staying for you know the, the social hour because they're all eating crap, okay? A bunch of godly eat people, godly people eat a bunch of calories, right? So we got in, got out. Why are these people so scared of carbs and donuts? Like, eat a bagel. Maybe y'all would be less annoying and a little bit more tolerable if you had some graham crackers or some coffee or a donut, God forbid. You ever had Krispy Kreme? If I don't stop yawning, Craig is going to get mad at me and call me a beach. Tia removed herself from leading women's Bible study and leading that and leading that. I removed myself from all the, you know, the, the group. Unless 
we said we're not going to one event unless there's a potential client or potential coach there. But we also realized the church we were attending didn't have a lot of fruit, had a lot of rotten carp in it. Okay. Just the truth. I'm not picking on the church. I love the church. I'm just saying the church we were going to at the time was extremely hateful towards C and I because we disrupted their 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 uh their, their, their what are those hot things, those Krispy Kremes. They would bring hot Krispy Kremes every week, and Tia started bringing fruit. They didn't like that. So you think that these people are hateful because and are hateful to you because you don't like Krispy Kremes and you brought fruit instead. Roger, I hate to tell you this, but that's not why. <laughs> that's not what it is. It's probably because of the word he used earlier to describe someone on Instagram. Probably because you and your wife are insufferable and annoying people. He didn't use the word insufferable. He probably had, doesn't have that in his vocabulary. Uh, but yeah, it's probably because y'all are insufferable and annoying and tried to recruit everyone who went to your church. That's probably why, babe. It has nothing to do with the Krispy Kremes. Guess what? You can be a healthy weight. And like when you flex, you got the, the start of that V and the like wings that are like your muscles on the side. I'm literally describing Tony's body. And still eat donuts. That man still eats donuts. Okay, you should have seen what I packed in his lunch today. It was so cute. He got a little Debbie snacks. He got a sandwich. He, that man eats a bunch of carbs. Oh my God, did you know that carbs aren't gonna kill you? Did you know that? Carbs aren't gonna make you fat. Everything in moderation, babe. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be fine. You know, butter, probably not gonna kill you either. Everything in moderation. You're gonna be okay. It's not about the Krispy Kremes, buddy. Don't do that to my Krispy Kremes, all right? So we just showed up on Sunday. And God's family meant Friday night was our time with the girls away from the phones from six o'clock to about nine o'clock when their bedtime, then we picked up the phone again. So we had a three hour family night for five years. After that, it went off to Via. We put in level up, we put in convention, we put in client support, we put in one hour of conversations a day, one hour of social media a day. Oh, by the way, this was done at lunchtime at the furniture business. This was done before dinner, after dinner. We were obsessed. Remember, we we had goals. I, I was. You only had three hours of family time a week. I mean, listen, I don't. We, it's I, we don't have a, like a family yet. We're getting there, but like even Tony and I spend more time together than that, like uninterrupted. Like that's sad. Thousand dollars in unsecured credit card debt. So I don't know. Maybe some of you just aren't in enough pain yet to forcefully act with you. But I'm like, Optavia is the only thing that has ever paid me consistently. Optavia pays me more consistently than I pay my employees. Every time I eat a maples and brown sugar oatmeal like I just did this morning, I feel better, I look better, and someone says, wow, Doug, you're looking good. There might be something to this. And oh, by the way, we're a $200 million company. Moonlighting is Take Shape for Life, saying Metafast all over the packaging, competing with distribution centers. I know I'm sounding like this is uphill both ways in the snow, but honestly, you guys don't know how good you have it. And for some of you that are around, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, obsessed coach. My kids, my spouse, and others. Anything else? All right. My kids, my spouse, others are asking what got oh, into me. Oh, Roger, you're a. Others are asking what got into me. They almost are considering doing an intervention on you. I would say my life is somewhat out of balance right now. And I'm not meaning the wrong way. I'm meaning you're, you're, you're. Is your life out of balance? Do your family and friends want to check in on you? Do you walk into a room and wonder, is this a surprise party or an intervention? Are you unrecognizable to all of your loved ones? You might just be an obsessed Octavia coach. How, this is not appealing, buddy. You're not, like, I know what you think you're doing, but it's not giving the way you want it to be giving, or it's not giving what you want it to be giving. Listen, Mary, it's, it's just not, okay? It's not. You, you found yourself, uh, like I did last night, saying, I probably could have got home last night. The road was closed. Eh, I don't know if I could have got home last night or not. But I'm like, I can go home and have dinner with Tia, or I can stay up here and work till midnight. I'll stay up here and work till midnight. Sorry, T. When we've hit our goals that we mutually agreed upon, we'll have a nice dinner. We'll just do it in Greece. Okay. But for this season, we have chosen to be obsessed. So yeah, I'm a little obsessed. Obsessed coach says, I'm at my goal weight and or I'm obsessed with fat burn and I'm almost there. I'm just going to move right past that one because I, I, if I have to keep talking about our personal health to, to freaking coaches that say they're obsessed. Just but like you're OK, so he's saying that, well, yeah, we we have to be obsessed in this season of life, like 
or in the season of our business, like him and his wife, but they're at the top of the company. So again, when do you get to stop? Also, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm cutting a makeup brush. Just either do it or don't. I mean, this is like a little bit of a crap or get off the pot. <laughs> some of you need to take some big old craps, right? Get the crap out of the system. Get some Optavia back in your veins, baby. Some of y'all really just need to shit your pants. Either take a big old dumpsy or get out of the company. Mm. I'm on training live, every training with camera on or watching the recording fully present within 24 hours. In fact, I'm bugging them to get the recording. I don't do this on purpose because right now I'm getting new systems in place, but I'm shocked how many people don't text me for the recording for calls more often. And especially since I've stopped putting them on stream. It's interesting. Again, just, this is just a truth salad, okay? Take it or leave it. But why do they need to be there if they're already trained? Y'all may, 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 you know, you may like a Cobb salad, maybe you want the Caesar. <clears throat> I have an active war room in my office with at least 150 names on it at minimum, and I am working from them. Dan Valentine covered this really, really well last week on boot camp. You, 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 there's no in process. You're either, you, you've done it or you're not going to do it. My binder of client and coach support is falling apart. It's getting so thick. I always love to refer to Shay Galloway when it comes to binder, man. Her binder is like five, seven inches thick. Like she, she puts the D, she has like a double D uh, binder. You know what I'm saying? She puts like the D in D rings of binders because there's so many potential clients, so many potential coaches falling out of that binder. It's always falling apart. I'm like, oh, no crap while you run high frontline volume. Of course you do. She has a system. I'm available to Zoom and help my team almost 24 seven. Name the time, I will be there. Oh, uh, let me check my schedule. Mm, time for freedom. Time for freedom. Who is she? Who is she? We don't know her. We don't know what free time is. We don't know what time freedom is. I am a slave. I am available all the time to everyone. And that's how you achieve this freedom and this lifestyle. Baby, is it worth the money that you have to be available to everyone all the time? No, it's not. It's really, really, really not. Croquet lessons at two o'clock. I've integrated life lessons at four. I have my 14th church event this week at seven. You guys see what I'm saying? Like you're in a season. If you want growth, do the work that growth requires. But if you don't just go, you know what? I'm good managing. I'm making eight grand a month. I'm making five grand a month. I'm making 15 grand a month. I'm making 22 and just say, I'm living a 10 times better life than I was when I was X. And, and, and I think this is what I'm doing today is I want to help you manage expectations. We have a lot of trainings on managing disappointments. How can you di be disappointed if you want, a, you want to double your business and you know you can, but you're only putting in accountability or all in work? Nothing's going to change. You're in a managing season. And I think you just, it's important that we are really in touch with. But why do you do so many trainings on managing disappointments? That's weird. And also extremely telling. Really in touch with truth and not hypothetical and believe because fantasy as Dave Blanchard has taught me is a very dangerous place to fantasize about things that if, if, if I'm not bringing into reality through truth and work, I've lost 37 people. Um, okay. I have a clearly defined goal, clearly defined body, business, and income. For the first time in probably three years, I set clearly defined goals in November. I'm at my lowest weight in probably eight years right now. I'm at my lowest body fat percentage in probably ever. My business had growth in January. Again, I've got a lofty goal, but they are clearly defined. I know exactly, I don't know exactly where, I know exactly where I plan and want to be on April 24th when I turn 45. I have zero compromise in my life right now, zero. Zero. I got invited, you know, you think hanging out with Floyd Mayweather the other night, I got invited to a couple of, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to name drop because I hate that. Bougie, T and I got invited to a really bougie. I was hanging out with Floyd Mayweather the other night. I'm not going to name drop because I hate that. Sir, you you just did the thing. I was in town this last week. We said no. Why did we say no? Because it doesn't support our goals. We knew that there would be compromise there. There will be plenty of years to maybe get invited to another celebrity Super Bowl party. And I'm not into celebrities. But I wanted to go because I want to put myself in bigger rooms. Nope, said no, because we have- What? So you don't care about celebrities, but you wanted to put yourself in bigger rooms 
go down to the Holiday Inn and go stand in their event space, baby, if you want to just be in a big room. So you, you don't care about who's in the room, but you want to be in a bigger room. So you do care about celebrities. You do care about status. Like Because we have clearly defined goals in our business, but we know we will not get there unless our body aligns. My social media looks like a crazy obsessed person with health and helping people. Y'all, unless, unless you're doing beef, oh, Christina Beaver um, type, of, type, of, type, of, type of reels, dude, that gal's obsessed, okay? Again, she'd be global in six months, max. Does, it, does your social media look like a crazy obsessed person? And some of you might be going, Doug, I, I, you know, I just don't think I want it. And that's okay. That's what this was for. Have you been guilty lately of falling asleep? with your phone because you just, you're, you're obsessed. You can't turn it off, you got notifications. The only way to become successful in this company, no sleep, another bus, train, club, another club. The only way nonstop, you better fall asleep while working. Have you ever done that? It sucks. She's coming in from all the conversations you've been starting. You dug this, Doug, this seems like a little bit out of balance. It is. If you want something great, you're gonna be out of balance for a season. Again, establish priorities, okay? but your kids need to understand mom and dad have not earned the right to be at your 100% back and call. Part of the reason I came up here to get away, I had to get out of the house was because I deal with dad guilt. Phoenix coming home at three o'clock in the afternoon, I deal with dad guilt. So I have to leave the house because he never knew what it was like. My and Kate remembered what it was like bringing me dinner at the furniture store and then Tia taking them back home to go to bed. That's all they, that they very vaguely remember that. And they're gonna talk about that level up. Phoenix will never know. He just knows a dad that's always there. And I'm like, you're going to have your kids speak at your, your event. Oh, that's highly inappropriate. I feel like your kids are going to hate you later on in life. Or maybe they're brainwashed too. So whatever. Either way, it's extremely unhealthy. I'm like, I got to get some work done, son. I'm in a season. I like, use February. It's, it's March. Like, daddy, you need to worky, right? This integrated life. I'm, I'm glad you see, but you need to see it. You need to see a mom and dad hustling. He, he, all he knows is IPD life. He only knows year 12, 13, 14. That's all he knows. He needs to see mom and dad like grinding and say, no, baby, we can't do that because we want to give you a better life. Some of you, I hope your kids are. I thought you already gave him a better life. So which is it? Are you in the best season of your life where you get to just coast or are y'all hustling constantly and not hanging out with your kids? Like pick one, buddy. You're not doing a good job at selling this. You're all over the place. Obsessed coach. I will be sitting front row at level up or awaken. Doug, are there reserved seats? Nope. Convenient how the last one is like their event that you have to pay to go to. Super convenient. Early bird gets the seats. Oh, so sitting front row assumes that I'm coming to level up or waken. Yeah. I have absolutely no work-life balance. I have no personal life because this entire thing consumes my life. I am at your beck and call. I'm your beck and call girl, if you will. Name that movie. Thank you very much. Personal time? Listening to a podcast in your car? Nope. Want to go pick something up at Target? Do a little self-care? Absolutely not. You don't get to do that. You better get on a Zoom call every day of your life, okay? That's how you win. I'm reaching out to my coaches frontline and in depth weekly to see what type of support I can offer them. I'm not making excuses here, folks. I can't check every single box on Obsessed right now. Okay. Some of you have the size of business where you can, and you want to double or triple that size, get to a size to where like, I, I, I can't reach out to everybody. What do I do? That's a new problem. Come, come mentor with me when you actually deal with coach guilt to where you have so much either coming at you or there's so many people that might need you, but you, you like literally aren't able to reach all of them and you feel like they're falling through the cracks. Okay. That's the side effect of being obsessed for a season. Again, it's a great problem to have. That's the side effect of one, recruiting a sh ton of people, having a large under organization under you, but then also working in an MLM that is an unstable and unsustainable business model. If you want some mentorship on that when you get there, please let me know. I'd love to help you with that. But for right now, like your phone needs to be outgoing and stop being ingoing. Ingoing phone is a managing phone in a managing business. An outgoing phone is an obsessed. Screw my rank, I'm building new business. And I'm looking for people who are looking for me. I also say this, screw my rank. I'm letting it go. I'm not attached to titles and all that crap. It's good. I'm building new business, new business. That doesn't even make sense. Because if you are focused on new business, recruiting new people, then you are going to rank up. Like that doesn't make sense. Business to where my Monday night training, we went 15 minutes long. Okay. This last Monday night training, 
15 minutes long. I don't like doing that, but we had some heavy content in the system thing I'm going through. We lost 100 people during the call in the last 25 minutes. We lost 100 people. I'm like, crap, man. And again, it was a community zone. So there were pre client, there were clients that had stayed on checking out what we do because we all invite people to stay on the call. Then I went an hour training plus 15 minutes. At the end, I'm like, I know it's late. I'm going to stop recording. I'm going to take some questions like I do at the end of every training. Nope. Most of the coaches had logged off. I didn't know this. You know who asked questions come off mute? Yeah, because it's boring. And they already know most likely the stuff that you're teaching because you're wasting their time because that's what y'all do. Uh, uh, Sharon's iPad came off mute. Yeah, Doug, uh, I'm, a, I'm a client. Uh, 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 what would you say to me? Yeah, and that's not how she talked, but you get what I'm saying. She asked a very client question about maybe exploring coaching. The next guy comes off. Can't remember his name. Was it Mark? He's a friend of Janice's. She, he was just like, man, I don't know, man, this is crazy, but I'm a client. I stayed on an hour and 15 minutes later, I have a client staying on and a healthy batch of coaches had logged off. I don't know who logged off just for the record. Why would they stay on? That makes no sense when they could be, obviously I don't want anyone to be in an MLM. I don't want anyone to recruit anyone, but like if they could just like, you're wasting their time. They could be on the phones. They could be selling something. Ugh, this guy is like. I know I keep saying insufferable, but I really feel like he like he's getting mad anytime someone like accidentally comes off mute. He doesn't like the fact that he's like lost 30 people during the call. Maybe it's because what you're saying is not of value or let me guess, they've heard it at least once a week since they started and it's not helpful, but they don't have the balls to tell you that. You want a truth salad, Roger? There's your truth salad. What you're offering them, and this isn't about him, it happens with every MLM, but what you're offering them is most likely redundant, regurgitated, bill sh okay? Because I don't look, I, I don't have time to stock this stuff and I wouldn't care to anyway. What that tells me is new people are hungry to learn. Old people are like, eh, I've already heard this before. Then freaking do it, do it. Golly, people are logging off now. <laughs> We're two minutes over. I know. I, I am. I'm long, but this is it. You can't get mad that people are logging off when you gave them a set time and they like they have a hard stop. It's very unprofessional that you tend to go over every single time. And if they're not doing it, clearly it's not attainable. And what you're teaching isn't actually like sufficient. And I can't pay my bills with other people's opinion. And I'm in the season for the next six weeks of doing me. Friends. Oh. Where's your effort been the last six weeks? Just be honest. Have you been obsessed? You've been all, all in, but with obsessed goals, or you've been obsessed with maybe an accountable business? You've been, are, are you a global with ha, running an accountable all in business and you have obsessed goals? Like we just got it. We got to get some, seek some truth and make that pivot the next six weeks. I know this was hard. I know this was a good truth salad. Some of you are like, holy crap, Doug, you just literally called me out and you don't even know it. Good. Go get registered for level up. Go get registered for Awaken if that's... Oh my God, guess who's gonna be there? John C. Maxwell, Nick Johnson, Brody Pearson, Buck Wise, Daniel and Deborah Giles. They sound like winners. Hosted by Doug and Tia Wood. There's one minute left of this. Don't care to watch it. That was horrible. I hated every minute of it. And by hated, I mean I loved it. Be smart. Be self-aware. When someone's trying to tell you stuff like this, like these are all red flags. Almost everything you said was a red flag. Like, I'm going to give you a truth salad. Oh, are you? Yeah, big guy. You're going to give me a truth salad? No, you're not. None of that was truth. He even admitted it himself that he just regurgitates this same doo-doo butt juice diarrhea as he does every time and that people keep leaving because he goes over time reiterating the same stuff that's not valuable. And why do you think he has to keep being in this obsessed season and not see his kids year after year after year is from what it sounds like? Probably because it's an unsustainable, unattainable lifestyle and practice and business model. And maybe because his downline isn't doing that well because the information that he's giving them sucks. <laughs> And that's why they all keep leaving the calls. Anyways, yikes, yikes, yikes. Again, it's not about these people, this couple, this guy. I don't care about Roger, okay? I don't, there's a billion Rogers, Craigs, Dougs out there who are super cringe or even worse than this guy. Absolutely, he's just the example. I don't care, but I do care about you and I don't want you to fall for this uh, dumb BS. There is no quick fix to losing weight and feeling great. Don't eat garbage. 
drink water. Anyways, so be nice to yourself. Don't fall for this BS. You are way better than that. Please try not to fall into this forced capitalism. I want to do, I know I've talked about forced capitalism a bit now and like, I feel like every single video since like two months ago, since I heard about it on a podcast basically, but I really want to do a video where I talk more in depth about like the idea of forced capitalism, which is pretty obvious, like what it is, you know, just people being like, you're not working hard enough. If you don't have a Lambo by 24, you're dead. Uh, yeah, those people, the insufferable people like that. Two white guys with microphones vibes. <laughs> And W Fab girl vibes for sure. <sighs> Love yourself, accept yourself, be self aware, and just learn to be content with yourself, man. That's all you can do. You're valuable, stay spicy, your feelings are valid. If you're going through a hard time right now, I feel you. Um, just try to work on reframing. That's what we've been working on a lot, and my therapist is really proud of us. But that's what I've been working on a lot is reframing and just focusing on the positive, like acknowledging the negative, obviously, but like understanding what's out of your control, because let's be honest, a lot of the S-H-I-T that we deal with in life is completely out of our control and we just have to roll with it. So being mad about something, being upset about something, yes, acknowledge your feelings, your feelings are valid. Feel them, move through them, accept it. it it's it's not gonna fix the issue, right? So no use crying over it. If you want to, fine, go for it. Feel your feelings, please don't suppress them. But you're gonna get through it. This is temporary, it's gonna be okay. Listen, girl, I don't have a place to live after 10 days, okay? <laughs> and I'm fine. Oh, oh, we'll be okay, it's fine. I'll see you in my next video. Love you, you're the best. And who knows, I might be filming from somewhere else in my next video. I probably have like four more videos that I'll film in here, four or five. I'm gonna try to film like a lot more in here so that I can, again, get ahead of myself so we can move and get settled. See you in my next video, goodbye.